Well, that's David Ward just finishing up there in the main auditorium. I'm Kim Ingalls and I'm here to take your questions and put them to David. He'll be joining me here live in just a couple of minutes. So hashtag on land. We've got some questions coming in and I'm sat here poised and ready to ask your questions. We're live in Penrith in Cumbria in the north of England, but we're broadcasting right across the world. We want to make it as international as possible. So if you've got a question, hashtag on land and we'll put it to David Ward. We'll be back with you streaming live in just a couple of minutes. Well, we're glad you're joining us wherever you are across the globe. I've got David Ward here with me now. David, you've done a lot of talking already this morning, but we're streaming live to over 20 countries. How was that for you this morning? Oh, it was good, yeah. yeah. It, was, uh, uh, it went reasonably well, I think. A um, few technical glitches, but that's, that's often to be expected. Um, but I think what I really liked about it was that I got a reasonable number of uh, questions at the end, and that, for me, is a, is a, a, is a really important part to engage in the in the conversation with the audience. So you, I wasn't able to listen to that bit. I heard most of what you were talking about with colour and everything. Did yeah. you get some interesting questions in the auditorium? Yeah, some very interesting questions. And, uh, and, and I like that because it means that people have actually sort of been digesting it and thinking about how it relates to their work. And, uh, and that's, for me, for me, a, a large part of what I do is about trying to, to, to inform people, to educate people, to, to try, hopefully inspire them, people to, to think about the, what goes on behind photography. So rather than about the, the hows, rather than about the nuts and bolts about how you make images, actually about why. And, yeah. and that, that for me is the fascinating thing in photography. Um, the how is kind of the easiest thing to get, get around. I know lots of people will disagree with that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but in, especially in the current you know, era with digital cameras, it's, it's much quicker to, to close that loop about getting reasonably technically competent photographs. But actually to make photographs that move people mm -hmm. it is, is the much harder thing. And that, that all relates to the whys. That all relates to how we emotionally respond to photographs, which is, which is not about getting something perfectly sharp. You know, nobody ever stood in front of a photograph and wept because it was sharp. You might stand in front of your own and weep because it's not sharp, but that's a whole different <laughs> issue. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that, that, it was good. It was nice to get a good response. Well, we've got some questions coming in. You talk about emotion. Dorcas is talking to us and she says, you know, landscape photography, it seems to be talked about as being documentary photography these days. How can we reverse that? Yeah, I think, I think there is certainly, well, one of the issues I think that's happened with the net is that the, uh, an awful lot more work is, is available for people to view than it used to be uh, possible to view. And the majority of that is probably what you would just call straightforwardly descriptive photographs. They're, they're photographs of a place and, and, and you, you might describe them as documentary photographs. Um, how do we reverse that? I don't know that we can reverse that because I think that's what most people want to do. They, they want to in some sense capture um, a memory of what it was like to be in that place, um, but for a, for a, a sub group of photographers, what they want to do is they want to try and engage people in a more emotional conversation. And the only way you can do that really is just to be true to yourself, is to actually just think about what it is that moves you as as a photographer, and to concentrate on those elements and 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 to work with it. And it's it's all about practice. It's all about carrying on doing that and trying to ignore those things that you think are, are irrelevant. Now, peer pressure obviously can play a big part in that and that's probably worse now than it used to be because we all have access to men so many sources of photography. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have to describe yourself, what kind of photographer do you describe yourself as? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. See, I, I sometimes wonder if I'm a landscape photographer. I, um, I, I photograph the landscape, but I, I think of it as raw material rather than subject. The mm -hmm. subject for me is usually about, about colour uh, or about perception, about how actually uh, a photograph translates the reality. Um, that, that's historically been the argument that says that photography isn't an art. Um, 
but yeah, that, that's what I'm trying to do with my photography. And, I, and it's very much a personal exploration. Uh, and I understand that a lot of people won't actually understand what I'm doing in an individual image because you can't make them mm -hmm. unless you actually write a whole load of text to to point them in a direction, and that's not... That's not the point of no, what you're no, doing at all, is No, you it? want to be a... You, you want to write books if that's what you want to do, not not take photographs, I think, yeah. All right, hashtag on land. We've got another question come in from Paul. Um, what colour combinations set out the winner in Glencoe, in your opinion? Uh, I think it was the muted colour that probably... Mark, Mark Littlejohn's picture. Uh, I think it was probably the muted colours that, that work so powerfully in that image because they have an emotional charge. It's not celebratory, it's melancholic, uh, and I think that was maybe the, the issue that a lot of people had when they, f they found it a difficult image, was that they, mm -hmm. they expect landscape photographs to be celebratory in a, in a sort of romantic tradition. Uh, and one of the things that I'm, I'm interested in, and I know a lot of other photographers who are here are interested in, is, is actually that you can express other emotions in a photograph. So it was Mark's very skillful uh, use of split toning and actually desaturating the colours, making them muted, that made it such a powerful image. If you'd taken the same image and you'd put the saturation up, actually it would have been nothing. Yeah. It, it's it's a it, it's a it's a subtle image, and and maybe that's also something that people are not used to interpreting colour. Much more challenging as an image than the celebratory images you talk yeah, about. Yeah. 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 And we 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 live in a we live in an age where the dominant aesthetic really comes from the from the Romantic era and from Ansel Adams and people like that. Okay, he wasn't a colour photographer, but he set the tone of what the subject matter was for most people. And, and I think an interesting difference between photographers and most artists is that photographers are, are obsessed with objects. They're obsessed with what they photograph, you know, whether it's a mountain or whether it's a river or a particular object. Whereas most artists would start from the notion of they want to express a theme, they want to talk about an emotion, they want to, they want to talk about uh, you know something like Guernica, um, Picasso's famous painting. He's he's talking about how dreadful that was, how how awful that that that, that bombing was. Um, whereas a photographer, they start with photo wanting to document somewhere, mm -hmm. um, and only only afterwards do some of them think about oh well. How, is, do I have any emotional charge in that? Mm -hmm. um. Right, okay. Alan Ranger asks, does David feel that photography has become diverse and rich or diluted by the millions that now enjoy the DSLR? <laughs> <laughs> um, Great question, Alan, thank <laughs> you. I think it's probably a bit of both actually, isn't it? Um, there is an argument for saying that uh, 25 years ago, uh, a lot of the pictures, the equivalent pictures that we see now published on the social media groups uh, mm -hmm. would never have seen the light of day. They would have, they would have stayed in somebody's drawer um, and maybe at Christmas your uncle Harry would have treated <laughs> you to a, to a slideshow, maybe of pictures that you didn't find that interesting. Um, now that's not, not by any means the majority, but I think what has happened is that um, it's become easier to be swayed by other people's work, I think, because it's easier for trends to develop, I think, than it were when, you know, when the only way that you got to see other photographers' work perhaps was to look at books. Yeah. That publication was the only way that you got your work out there. Uh, and we spent time looking at a book. You spend, you know, a considerable length of time maybe looking at an individual photograph in a book in a way that you don't on the net. The other thing that's happened is that for a lot of the time on the net, the photographs are reduced to 200 square pixels. Mm -hmm. uh, and that doesn't allow you, perhaps, to, to assess a more subtle photograph. And I think Mark's photograph that we were talking about earlier, one of the problems that he had when it was first posted, it's posted on Facebook or whatever, and it's a relatively small image. Now, when you go and see the print, which we've got, we've privileged to have a copy of the print outside and yeah, it's fabulous it's, yeah. it's a fabulous image uh, but people are assessing it on that little yeah. thing and they go oh well there's nothing in that I can't see anything Which in that it's not how it's meant to be looked the, at at no, all is and it? the, the subtlety is not there and, it, and, and if you look at the work of somebody like Jem Southern um, you know he's got 50 by 40 inch prints I think they are mm -hmm. out there um, and there's an enormous amount of richness and subtlety in those pictures but if you stick them on the net they don't look like anything no 
No, absolutely. It, I mean, it has its uses, but it's limiting, definitely. Yeah. And you use a large format camera. Yeah. What's the reasoning behind that? Uh, well, I suppose partly it's just my, my, my history. When I, when I started as an assistant in photography in the, in the early 80s, everybody that I worked for um, used large format cameras. Um, uh, and so it, it was a sort of natural choice. But I was also influenced by um, looking at photography that I admired and mostly that was photography from the United States from the 20s, 30s and 40s um, through to the 50s. Uh, people like Minor White who, who shot on, on large format but also shot on smaller formats and obviously Edward Weston, Ansel Adams, people like that. So there was a, there was a desire to want to try and see if the craft that they had employed influenced the way they photographed and it definitely does. It's the, it sl forces you to slow down and for me that's a that's a very important thing. I tend to be a bit too um, trigger happy if I, um, <laughs> if I if I've got a little DSLR. I try I, I I work too fast. So it's important to me that the camera makes me work slowly. And it's not really about the capture medium. I think a lot of people think, oh well, it's because he he likes shooting on Velvia. But I would be happy to shoot on 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 a digital back as long as I had the view camera. Now, unfortunately, at the moment, the 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 options that I have are, are for medium format view cameras and I find that uh, a reduced experience compared to using a 5.4 or, or a larger view camera. Um, so you're not going to be changing anytime soon? I've got three years worth of film left can and you hear me? Can you hear me? I yeah. don't know, I might right, pick up some more film on the way but um, the I mean, a, a, a worry for me I suppose is Fuji feet. now, Fuji Hunt is the, is the major manufacturer of chemistry for processing E6 in the UK there are not very many processors left so they might well reach a stage where I might still have film in the freezer but I can't process it. But you it. can't process it, yeah, yeah. that's got to be a bit of a worry then hasn't it? <laughs> um, I'm laughing because Jim Robertson here has asked the question that I was going to ask towards the end. Have you got a favourite colour? Blue. Yes I thought you might say that, blue is <laughs> my favourite colour as well. Jim if you're still there, hashtag on land, let us know what your favourite colour is. So in terms of what you've been talking about today and colour at the conference, um, what's it like being part of all of this and, and what are you expecting other photographers to talk about? Um, well I think it's very exciting to actually just be engaged in a conversation. I said right at the beginning when I was introducing with Tim that um, we spend too much time in, in, in a virtual world and it's really nice to actually meet people and exchange ideas face to face. <coughs> um, for me, several of my sort of heroes are here. So Hans Strand and, and Paul Wakefield are, uh, are a couple of my heroes. Um, and I'll just be fascinated to, to see their images and hear what they have to say about them. Um, uh, th those are the big things that I want to get out of it. Um, uh, I think it's, it's nice to have the opportunity to be engaging in a in a in a different conversation a conversation that's not about apertures not about <laughs> shutter speeds not about color spaces absolutely um, something that's that's more i suppose tuned towards the artistic yeah jim's come back he says blue's his favorite color as well blue smiley face that's fantastic jim well david thank you very much indeed you've done so much talking already this morning we'll let you go and grab a coffee and um, paul gallagher is up next so we'll be back with you very shortly don't forget it's hashtag on land if you have questions for paul and we'll be back here very soon we'll see you shortly <laughs>